Good morning, everyone. Oh, it's great to be here with you. Just back from a little day trip to um, Seven Springs. This beautiful area outside Phoenix. It's only about an hour outside of town. And went there and, uh, oh, me and Monica just feel so much more refreshed today. Uh, good morning, Suzanne. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good to see you, Christina. Good to see you, Monica. Good to see you. Good morning. And really, uh, that's what I wanted to share this morning and encourage everyone here that there's this part of us, there's a part inside of all of us that is wild, you know, that's wild, that's um, full of nature. And this part of us within ourselves, it needs to be refreshed from time to time. We need to put down the screen, step away from all of the internet devices and just really ground in uh, to feeling the earth. And yesterday I, I got into the water and it was cold. It was, it was really cold, but I needed that. You know, I needed that refreshing feeling, just dunking myself in. And um, I needed to feel the earth underneath my bare feet. I needed to watch the beauty of uh, the wind as it blows through the trees to look into the reflection of light upon a flower to be on the trail and, and to feel the the stones beneath my feet to feel the wind against my skin the feeling of the sun and to, to just lay there in in basking in the sun's rays and these are parts of us that I feel in our contemporary culture sometimes go uh, neglected. We neglect the idea of sitting next to the fire and the wisdom of the fire and the wisdom of the water, the wisdom of the earth, the wisdom of the air, and what that means to be in relationship with the elements, what it means to be in motivated relationship. How are we striving to connect that connection, to create that relationship? Relationships are um, challenging. And in our contemporary culture, and especially during this time of isolation, during the quarantine, there's a tendency to be like the turtle, right, that goes into the shell, to be like the, the bear that goes into the cave and hibernates and kind of turns off the world. And this can serve us. It can serve that masculine side of us, that need to protect, that need to isolate. Yet allow yourself to to wake up from the imbalance within your heart. If there's an imbalance and you're feeling into that space, separate yourself from that behavior and look at it. Look at it with the nurturing power of the feminine. Look at it with the mystical wonder of the divine child within you. And in that place of recognizing how imbalanced we can be, I mean, the, the imbalance of the masculine is the air we breathe right now, right? You know, our... Our whole institutional mindset, the whole uh, idea of the military-industrial complex, this need to create this 
uh, war machine to protect us. This is all out of the imbalance of the masculine. And as we begin to step into a place where we feel the fear of isolation, there's an opportunity for those of us that are spiritually mature to inhabit the space of perspective, to know that there is a time when we, as individuals, as spiritual beings in this incarnation, must recharge, must recharge the nurturing, the feminine aspect of ourselves. And what a beautiful opportunity to gift yourself the blessing of nature. When we step into the feminine and we step into that quality inside of our lives, the beauty of the reflection of the softness of a flower can be an insight to us if we allow ourselves to step into that fragrance, if we allow ourselves to be immersed within the space of what it means to truly hone in to sit with the nurturing value of the quality of the fire, to warm ourselves with the fire, to sit and, and understand the crackle as it begins to flow within the meditative experience of the conversation going on inside of our mind. These are the processes that will equip us to fortify the relationship that we have with Mother Earth. As we're stepping into this transitional moment, this incubation period, this opportunity for us to really hone in those qualities of our divine nature, the limitless potential that's within us. As we step into this, realize that you are not alone in that need. You are not alone in your need to connect to the mother. She's here for you. She's here in her infinite wisdom. And her hand is outstretched to you, saying, child, come, come to me now. Rest in my bosom. That's what she says. And yesterday it was like, oh, just laying my head on the bosom of Mother Earth. Laying before the, the sun on the banks of, the, of, Queen, or of uh, Cave Creek. Laying there in Seven Springs. A beautiful group of wild horses came to us. They were a little intimidating. They were very friendly and they came right up. <laughs> Me and Monica, we wanted to pet the little baby one, but of course the daddy came, you know, and uh, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. It's beautiful to be in that space and to feel also the invite of the spirit. You know, we are conditioned, right? This, there's almost this innate, oh my gosh, this is a Blair Witch moment. The conditioning of the, the media and the conditioning of the way we look at those that are in the unseen, right? As I was out there in nature and I was feeling into the presence of the ancestors in the hills, in the mountains, I was reminded of the gift of what it means to feel different. We are conditioned in our reality. As soon as we feel something in our body, we immediately call it anxiety. Where did this conditioning come from? Those of us that are in that place of empathy, those of us that are learning to understand energy and are, are really stepping into the quality of being in relationship with interdimensional beings, when we feel into that space and we know that there is a presence there, how can we understand that presence with the love that we would love to another human being? It is within the consciousness that we do that. So as I was out there last night, and I was in the wilderness, and the darkness is around us, and of course, you know, as we step into that place, there's an uncertainty of the darkness, right? We want to have that light. But no, I went into the embrace, the embrace of the darkness, the embrace of the feeling of the ancestors that was there. You know, as I felt the presence in the mountains and around, I gave an invitation, come to our fire. And I even set out food for them on the, on the fireplace there. I set out a little, we were having s'mores. And I thought, what a great gift to the ancestors. I gave a gift of a s'more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is a way that we invite the relatives that are in the unseen. And when we feel into that place, is it really fear that we're feeling? Or is this the illusion of how we have conditioned ourselves? Realize that energy flowing through you is opportunity. Energy exists in two forms. And I've shared this and I'll share it again. Density and flow. 
When flow manifests itself, there is an energetic manifestation and displacement. When you're in the wilderness, when you're in the vastness of the desert, when you're in the, in the pines and in the mountains, and you feel the presence of the ancestors, and you feel the presence of the holy people, the star nations, the visitation, step into a place of love. You know, for those of you that have read the Sacred Seven and you remember when I was in the Grand Canyon and I was down there working, doing suicide prevention work with the Havasupai. And the elders, one of the, the medicine people there, invited us to go to the sweat lodge. And I was still in the confusion, right? I was in that place of dissonance, the place of dissonance in religion. And I know many of you that listen to this broadcast, you're in that place of dissonance. You're in that place of of do I, there's a part of me that wants to let go of my fear, but it's so comfortable to be in the those and them place, right? Those, those people over there and us over here, we're the chosen frozen, right? We're those that are called into that place of, of being filled with the Holy Ghost and all of these ideas that separate us from the earth. And in that place, I remember what it was like as I was in the uh, bottom of the Grand Canyon in the sweat lodge with the medicine people, the Havasupai, and the elder was singing these songs, and it was like his voice changed, you know? It was like, His voice literally changed while we were in the sweat lodge. And I felt a presence there. And immediately, within the, the confines of my Christian doctrine and my dogma, I began to associate that feeling of the presence with fear. And what happened? As I went back to the housing where they had us, I laid there and I closed my eyes. And immediately I seen this horned vision. This, this scary looking vision, right? And I thought to myself, you know, man, I must have picked something up. While I was in the sweat lodge, something must have attached itself to me. I opened my eyes really quick. But then as I began to meditate and I relaxed into the place of realizing everything's okay, a teaching came to me, a wisdom that I had heard on a documentary about shamanism in, the, in Asia. And they talked about the shamans in Asia, the holy people in Asia that are doing the spiritual work of the village. Whenever they're confronted with something that doesn't look so beautiful. They say to that image, to that energy, I love you. And I love you and I, I want you to know that you're okay. And you're beautiful. Was I closed my eyes there and I was meditating after the sweat lodge. I felt into this place. And I began to project love. I began to flow love into the image that was in front of me. In the screen of my eyelids. And as I was projecting love onto that, I realized that there was a part of me that was accepting something in my life. I was accepting the reflection of the fear. And instead of running from it and denying it, I accepted that part of me with love. And guess what? It faded into the darkness. And I had the best sleep of my life. What parts of you in the unknown relationship that you have to nature... What parts of you do you need to love? What parts of the darkness do you need to embrace with love? What parts of the qualities inside of you when you walk into the holiness of nature and you feel fear and you start to play the Blair Witch movies in your mind, when you start to feel all of those uncertainties come up within you, what parts of you can you embrace that that density of energy would magnify into the gravity of love? These are the questions that the spiritually mature begin to ask themselves. And I know you're here because you are seeking those qualities of the advancement of the evolution of your soul. So it is that so many of us are in this same place together. And I want you to know that you're not alone. Those questions are a part of our reality. Even me and Monica, we spent so many months and so much time sitting by the fire out in the woods and we know what it is to be 
present with a visitation from the ancestors, what it means to be present with a visitation from the star nations, what it means to be sitting by the fire and knowing that next to you is one of your relatives that has gone on to the other side. These feelings that we feel inside of our lives that give us a place of peace rather than the uncertainty of energy entering in the room and calling it out as anxiety. How many times are you captivated to your thoughts of anxiety? Is there a part of you that yearns for freedom? Is there a part of you that yearns to manipulate energy? Like the true martial artist that will not look at an attack, but instead look at flow. Seeing only the flow of energy. No longer in the fear of being attacked, but looking at opportunity. Where is the opportunity for here to navigate life? These are the principles that are inside of you. You have that wisdom innately woven within the structure of your spiritual identity. It is a part of the process. And I want to thank you for joining me today, for being here, and for opening your heart to hearing this word of encouragement, hearing this word of opportunity as we advance ourselves into a place of great revelation as we utilize this quarantine as a time of infinite possibility. So we're going to go ahead and go into the prayer now. And for those of you that are just joining, and uh, I've been opening up this process here for you. If you donate any amount to this ministry, uh, we're going to send you. All you need to do is put audio book on your donation on... on um, PayPal, and we're going to send you an unedited copy of the audiobook. Uh, any donation amount, $1, $5, $5,000, <laughs> woo, limitless potential. We are going to send you an unedited copy of the audiobook, The Sacred Seven. This is the book that I authored about the ceremonial introduction and about the process of fortifying the architecture of self-identity. So I'm going to go ahead and light this fireplace here now, and then we will step into um, some prayers. I'll introduce myself here to you as well. So for me, the way that we begin this prayer is with thanks um, for the teachings of the quarantine, the teachings of COVID, we give thanks, and we, uh, we also step into the Holy Spirit, utilizing the, the giftings of the Holy Spirit as we begin to navigate this place of prayer. And then we'll move into a place of uh, prophecy, the gift of prophecy, the gift of encouragement, all of those giftings. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself here to the fireplace and to all of you in the traditional language as best as I know how. I was not taught the traditional language. I had to teach myself. So I just tried to do my best here. And uh, also, oh, I didn't grow up with it. So, And then I'll introduce myself in the contemporary language. So, Dogate, Andrew Ecker, Yenishe, Adonai, Nishinigi, Ede, Nishe, Irish, Bashachin. E day dasha che German dasha nali. A cote go e e to shri e Portland, Oregon inasha. Shema e Kathy Lindsay wo ye. Shaza e Dale Ecker wo le. My name is Andrew Ecker. My mother, Kathy Lindsay. My father, Dale Ecker. My mother's mother, Elva Gallegos, Apache woman from New Mexico. My father's mother, Evelyn Beatty, Irish woman from Pennsylvania. My mother's father, Leroy Lindsay, Apache man from Arkansas. My father's father, Wayne Ecker, German and Algonquin from Pennsylvania. I have a daughter. Her name is Bailey. I have a son, Peyton. I have a beautiful, beloved fiance, Monica. And I live here in Phoenix, Arizona. Although I was born in Portland, Oregon. I came into this body in Portland, Oregon. Uh, the first of a few cousins that would be born there. So I come into this prayer place now and offer an opportunity for all of us to ground in together. To be here in this prayer place. So if you would like, I invite you to close your eyes, to listen to my voice, to listen to the surroundings in your room, wherever it is that you're at. This is holy ground that you're on. And we give thanks for the indigenous people 
the original people of this land, the people that have been birth of the land. The lands here in, in Phoenix, the land of the Akmal Atam, the Hohogam, all the way back to the very dawn of creation. We give thanks for this circle of light and we invite all those that would come with love and gratitude to this place of prayer. All those within the infinite expression of the eternal wisdom of the universal consciousness, the goddess God, the holy place we invite, the, the Gahe, the Kachina, the Yebache, the holy angel light beings of all my relatives who have been gathered here to this place to pray, to unite in faith. And we thank you for the increase of our faith. We thank you for the increase of our faith that we may speak to the prosperity that you have given to us. We thank you, O blessed universal consciousness. We thank you, O, o beautiful Jesus Christ. We thank you, Holy Spirit, Yahweh, Buddha, Allah, Yusin, Mother Mary. We thank you. We thank you, Quan Yen. We thank you, all the goddess energies all the manifestations of the Divine Feminine, all the manifestations of the Divine Masculine. We thank you for the inner child, place in which we come into this reality through faith and knowing that we are protected, knowing that we are cared for emotionally, knowing that in this place of great understanding that we have been loosened from the insecurities of our finances, we have been loosened from the insecurities of our health. We are made in agreement in this place to be eternal beings. We thank you for this incarnation. We thank you for the ability to pray and to release upon the healthcare workers a powerful energy, an energy now that fills their hearts and equips them to go into this day knowing that they are not alone, but that we have joined with them in prayer. We thank you for those that are working in the government, and we pray that you would expand their consciousness and open up their minds to the revelation of the Spirit, and we allow for them to be released from the captivity of greed. We thank you for the institution of business and all the corporations. And we pray now that you would move upon the hearts of those individuals and you would release them from the idea of greed and the idea of self-motivation and instead that they would see the opportunity that they have to serve the earth, to serve all of the inhabitants. And we release the idea of production for the means of restoration, that we would produce to restore people, families, community, and the planet, and that we would understand the innate quality of beauty within all. We thank you in this sacred ceremony that in this place of great understanding that we can loosen ourselves from our own fear, that we can be together in the place of holiness, and we allow for ourselves to be in this place of holiness, inviting the Holy Spirit, inviting the Holy Ones to minister to us now. As we know that we are guided by the light, of the Most High, guided by the light of Creator God, guided by the light and the love of this beautiful planet, this arena that we allow ourselves to enter into, knowing that the song of the birds, the song of the wind in the trees, the crackle of the fire, the very song of the flowing of the waters is all a part of the orchestra and the symphony of life that we are allowing ourselves to be in. We thank you for the beauty of this. Oh, and I invite you, Holy Spirit, to be in my heart, to pray through me, to pray in me. Rada, ora, sangong kama, titu kashi nitawa anata, dani to kema, un kashi nitu ani wakani to para, sheri kung kani to amaku, sinitishki ni mawa. Tani tu kasi nito amaru kuma, beni tu kishi nito kamaru kasi nito ana, tani tu kishi nito amako nito awa ko nito anisito ukama, eni tu shki nito kamaru ruko, tse nito ane to aramako se niki nishka, ko ni kama ka ane to ane to kishi nito umane to ane. Seni tu pa ka ani tu ki ni ta ma ona ta ni ka ani shewa ka ona ma ani tu seni te ki ni ta ma ra ani ta ani ta okoni ama re ni ti shki ni ani. The holiness of intimate relationship is a bounty. Is a bounty of understanding. Within yourselves, I have come that you would know freedom, that you would know sovereignty, that you would allow for captivity itself to be captive. The thought 
the creation of your own limitations. In this place of limitless potential, arise to that which is inside of you, sacred ones, holy ones. You are the beauty and perfection of the hands of the universe, molded from the clay of the earth, woven into your DNA is the very beauty of what it means to be whole. I have equipped you with spiritual gifts. I have given to you insight, creativity, imagination, that you may expand your consciousness, that you may open your heart up to the angel beings, the light beings, the holy ones that even now knock at the door of your heart. Welcome the ancestors into your life. Welcome the holy people into your life. Let not the divide of your own fear keep you from living the ultimate potential of your life. Your story is known in the cosmic realm of the universal consciousness. You have been applauded. You have been cheered. You have been shown righteous in the beauty of your life, the wisdom inside of you, the greatness of what it means to be daughter, what it means to be son, what it means to be child, a holy seed of the universe planted into the earth. Remember the gateway into your mind. Remember the access point. Remember the place in which you find your confidence to write your songs, to dance your dances, to read your poetry, to the witness of the trees. It is this beautiful place inside of you that releases the trauma, that allows for the witness of the Holy Spirit to be in you. You are equipped now, child. You are encouraged now, child. The Holy Spirit was there with you in your time of need, in your time of pain, in your time of sorrow. So shall it be that you will be applauded in your time of victory. Grace and mercy shall guide you all of your life. You shall know what it means to sit at the table of the feast and to be fed as your insecurities of finances dissolve away. Know that it is the prophetic word that has been a blessing to you, a guiding post to you, a light on the hillside in the darkness that you would always be guided, protected, and cared for. Bless yourselves now with the robe of prayer, the robe of light. Bless yourselves, equip yourselves to be the voice, walking, dancing, praying, playing. Mm. Blessings. Feel a gentle movement now as we've Come here so many times to this place. My name is Andrew Ecker. My mother, Kathy Lindsay. My father, Dale Ecker. My mother's mother, Elva Gallegos. My father's mother, Evelyn Beatty. My mother's father, Leroy Lindsay. My father's father, Wayne Ecker. I come to this place now knowing that uh, there's been a breakthrough in the spirit already, um, is what I'm feeling from, from the holy people, is that there's been a, um, a release, a release in, in the infinite place. A release from the teachings of the karmic consequences of so many of our decisions in our lives that have kept us in a place of density and captivity. And this sometimes comes to me in, in, in a place of, because of my, my nature that's in me, the, the nurturing of that quality that's in a perspective and a relationship to time as a cycle. That as I come into this cycle, I know that it is patience that allows for the manifestation in all of my relatives. So I rest in this place and I want to give this word to you also to rest in this place, to rest in the place of understanding that there has been a teaching that has been released and that love is our guiding post. Love is our beacon of light. 
No matter what the world is doing, even in the chaos of violence, even in the chaos of separation, in all of the things that the world may participate in, realize that we, inside of this place, as it is in the reflection of all those, we are in a place of understanding that love and faith are the only powerful energies that can bring about a transmission. And that transmission inside of itself becomes the beacon of light, becomes the place in which we follow. There's a comfort in that, relative. There's a comfort in knowing this, in the knowing of the revelation. And I share this with you now in hopes that you would really eat of that, really sit with that, feed your soul with that knowingness. There's freedom in that place. Freedom for you, your family, generational freedom. Give yourself that gift today. I love you all so much. Thank you for being here with me, giving me an opportunity to minister. My heart of a servant is humbled by your attention, humbled by your appreciation. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to donate to this ministry, like I said, any donations done today, um, for the next, I'm probably only going to be a couple more days that we'll have, we'll be working on the, um, the audio book, but tune in later and I may be on there doing the audio book so you can get a, um, a insight into the behind the scenes workings of creating an audio book, <laughs> which is new to me, right? I'm, I'm continually learning new skills in this quarantine, but I love you guys so much and you guys mean so much to me and thank you for joining us here. And yeah, if you'd like to connect with the Sacred Seven and you haven't gotten a free copy of the book yet, go check out the sacred uh, com. You can sign up for our email list and receive a free copy. Blessings to everyone. Realize your potential. Realize your gift. There is a prophetess inside of you, child. There is a prophetess inside of you, daughter, that needs that voice to be illuminated and broadcast. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying to you. Your spiritual giftings and your blessings inside of you are waiting for activation. It is this time of incubation that you are finding the necessary keys to unlock the doors to the mystery from within. I bless you in the journey. And I pray that you would continue in your courage Loosen yourself from the captivity of the religious mindset. Step into relational spirituality. There is a freedom in relational spirituality. And I want to encourage you to believe. Believe, believe, believe. I love you so much. Blessings, everyone. Please share this message.